Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. God's grace through Christ is offered to everyone, so know that whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever you're going through, you are welcome here this morning. Welcome to all of those that are watching online. Maybe it's uh, from Gray and Ross. Gray and Ross uh, canceled their service this morning because of the drifting that was going on down there. Um, maybe you're watching from someplace around the country where it's a little bit warmer and less snowy than it is today. Wherever it is, we are so glad that you have joined us. Um, a couple of things. Uh, Thursday, to Wednesday, man, Wednesday, February 22nd is Ash Wednesday. And uh, we'll have a service we'll here for Wednesday night with the imposition of ashes. But before that, we're going to have our pancake and sausage supper again. And we're asking people, if you would like to donate a bag of pancake mix, that's the kind of pancake mix they like to use. So you can find that about anywhere. So you'll find that. And then, um, let's see, what else happened in the life of the church this week? Anything at all? Oh yeah, maybe we had a soup supper. Kathy, are you ready to talk about the soup supper? We got to get a microphone down here. Thanks, Cody. Well, just pat yourselves on the back. It was uh, more successful than than the one last year and the years before. We figure we sold about 396 quarts of soup. It depends how many we get out of each roaster, but that's what we guessed. It's amazing. <laughs> we, were, we were, huh? It's amazing. Yeah, we were completely sold out by 5.30. We were cleaned up, and Larry and I were on our way home probably 6 or shortly after 6, but there had been a mix-up in the, um, the orders, and so three containers had gotten put in the freezer, and I said to Larry, well, let's take that home, and we'll buy it because we didn't get any soup. You know, we wait till the end. It walked out to the parking lot. A lady drove into the parking lot and said, I'll take all three of those quarts and gave, <laughs> gave Larry $40 for it. So, you know, <laughs> uh, but thank you for everything that you did. You know, year after year, this turns out to be a great fundraiser for us. Right now, it looks like we made about $3,600, but we haven't paid for um, advertising yet. But it'll... It'll turn out to be a good thing, and we're really going to work hard on trying to get some kids to uh, summer camp this year, and hopefully we can spend down that money in that way, helping kids uh, get an experience away from here uh, with, with that. So thanks again. Pat yourselves on the back. I don't think any of us worked overly, overly hard because it was all spread out over so many of us, and to me, that's the way it should be. Well done, everybody. Jack, you want to talk about fellowship time? As I said last week, uh, we'll be changing coffee time just a little bit. Uh, the Ad Council has decided that because of the cost of the donuts and uh, things like that, we're going to uh, spread this out and uh, everybody can take their turn. Uh, we'll start in February and the... Ad Council will take uh, the Sundays through as many as we have, and we bring coffee cake, uh, bars, whatever we like, and that will hopefully simplify the, the process, and we won't have to go get it. And from then on, it will be in the uh, bulletin when, you know, we'll put the names down, and hopefully that will be simplified and much more scrumptious. Uh, what you have? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll put Charlotte in charge of that one. Make sure that everything is good. Thank you for that. <laughs> Anybody else have any announcements that we need to share today? All right. If there are no other announcements, I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able. Welcome your neighbor, and don't forget to wave to everybody watching at home online. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. And as long as we're up, let's sing, shall we?
And now would you please join in the call to worship? People of God, who do you come to worship? We come to worship the one true God. How will you worship? And now together as the body of Christ, would you please join in the opening prayer? Loving God, we come this morning seeking to abide in your presence. Open our minds to your spirit of wisdom that we may know how to live as your people. Open our hearts to your spirit of truth that we may love all your people with a love that speaks of justice, kindness, and radical grace. May this time of worship be authentic and pleasing to you. Amen. You may be seated. I also forgot real quick to mention that uh, Thursday, February 23rd, we'll begin a new Bible study. Uh, It'll be at 7 o'clock at night. You don't need a book. Uh, We have a video and a discussion, but if you'd like a book, let's... uh, family of faith, knowing that when we pray together, there's real power in our prayers. We generally start by sharing our joys and then our concerns, so I'll open it up and ask, does anybody have a joy that you would like to share today? Yes, sir. I'll start with a joy. Actually, I'd like to start with a little story. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-oh. So a a rabbit walks into the butcher shop and says, Sir, do you have any carrots? He says, No, this is a butcher shop. We don't have any carrots. So the rabbit goes away, comes back in the next day and says, Sir, do you have any any carrots? The butcher says, I told you yesterday, this is a butcher shop. We don't have any carrots. All right, so he leaves. Comes back to the third day and says, Sir, do you have any carrots? He goes, I've told you two days in a row. I do not have any carrots. If you come back in here, I'm going to nail your ears to the wall. So the fourth day, he doesn't come in. The fifth day, he doesn't come in. The sixth day, he comes in and says, Sir, do you have any carrots? I'm sorry. (laughs) Do you have any nails? I told you before, this is a butcher shop. I don't have any nails. Well, then, do you have any carrots? (laughs) (laughs) So if you want meat... You go to the butcher shop. If you want carrots, you probably should go to the grocery store. <laughs> and if you, want to, if you want to experience the Holy Spirit and the community of Christian fellowship, you need to come to our church. So if you or your family or your friends desire those things, please welcome. Uh, please come and join with us. Good comeback. Way to fix that. <laughs> what else? Who else has a joy that you would like to share today? 
You know, it's, uh, I, I, I say this every time, but it, it strikes me, um, you know, when we have the soup supper and, and you see people just all of a sudden show up at the appointed time and, and the, the kids were um, uh, jumping in there and running the, running the soup out to the outside and, and, uh, <laughs> and Peter are out there in, I don't know, 16 layers of clothes and you could not hardly see their face. They had so much clothes on. Uh, but it's in those times, in those moments, where we really experience Christian fellowship and what it means to be a, be a faith family. So uh, it's, it's a great reminder if you just sort of stand back and watch about the way that God works in this church. So well done. Well done, everybody. I got a, Cody, you got a microphone up here? Well, I want to publicly thank um, Hank, Propane Hank for the ads that he put on the radio over, I mean, so many times it was not boring, but he, he sponsored it, and I think we need to give him a public thank you. <laughs> Amen. Well said. Well said. How about concerns, things we want to hold up before God? Oh, you guys are all quiet today. Well, let me remind you that we are currently praying for uh, Carla McCleary's daughter, daughter-in-law, Tammy. Penny at Gray, we're praying for her. Roger Dozark and the pain that he's still struggling with. Coletta and her family. Um, and then, of course, uh, Julie, Amy, Emily, Carl, and their family. As <clears throat> They just had... Uh, I just officiated that funeral in Omaha on Thursday. Dar Fredrickson, we continue to hold her in our prayers. And everybody that's struggling right now in so many different ways. We have, um, we have so many people that have this COVID or strep or whatever is going on. We have um, uh, people that are struggling right now with some serious family issues. We have people that are struggling financially and with uh, their jobs. So when we go to God in prayer, today imagine that for all of those that we've named, and maybe you know someone else, for all of those that we're actually lifting them up before God, asking God to care for them. Let's go to God in prayer, shall we? Lord, we come today thankful to be here on this beautiful winter day, reminded of the ways that You cycle through the seasons, the way that You control every little detail and every little snowflake. Lord, we give You thanks for young people and old people and all the people in the middle for volunteers and people that chip in so that the world might see just a glimpse of your love. But in the midst of this, Father, we, we know that there are those that are struggling, those that are hurting with disease and illness, surgeries, heavy hearts. There are those that are struggling, Lord, with relationship issues and family issues and financial issues, addiction and abuse. Lord, for all of those that are struggling the most, we pray Your presence and Your peace upon each and every one. We ask that You would care for them, comfort them, heal them in only the way that You could do. Lord, help them to feel Your presence that they might know that even in the darkest hour, You are always with them, arm in arm, step for step, ready to carry them through even such a time as this. Lord, for all of this, we give You thanks and praise. Now let us join together with our brothers and sisters around the world today as we pray the prayer that Your Son taught us when we pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, Rhonda? Where's Rhonda? Rhonda's going to come up. Come on up, kids. Come on up. She's going to... We always have fun. How's everybody doing today? Good? All right. So I'm going to put the microphone down in a second. Okay. All right. So we've all thought of this new thing this summer. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Go ahead. If you're happy and you know it, bring some faithful to the church. Go ahead. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. What are you doing being shy? Come on. <laughs> All right. So what do you think if it, if it was a bird, if it was a bird that was supposed to be happy, what do you think they would do? If you're happy and you know it, flap your wings. It doesn't make any noise, but, you know, swish, swish, I don't know. <laughs> All right. What about a dog? What, what's a dog do when they're happy? Oh, I hope they don't. Wag their tail. Okay. So it would be like, um, if you're happy and you know it, wag your tail. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I should stand up for that. <laughs> We're not going through the whole thing like that. <laughs> so I heard a story about a little puppy who decided, you know, he figured out that his tail wagged when he was happy. So he figured his happiness was in his tail. Okay. So he was gonna. He decided he was gonna chase his tail and catch his happiness. He told that to an old dog, and the old dog said, you know, I noticed that too, that my tail always wags when I'm happy. But I've noticed that when I try to chase it, it always runs away from me. I can never catch it. Have you ever seen that when dogs chase their tail? I have seen them catch it. <laughs> but, yeah. He <clears throat> said, but I've noticed that when I chase it, my tail keeps running away. So then I, but when I go about my business, my tail follows me. Okay, which makes sense, it's attached, right? So the Bible has a lot to say about being happy, but it doesn't say that happy are those who have a lot of money, or happy are those that live in big houses or drive fancy cars. It doesn't even say that happy are, the only, happy are they who only have good things happen to them. What the Bible does say is happy are the merciful, happy are the peacemakers, and happy are the pure in heart. The Bible also says that happy is who is he who trusts in the Lord. Many of us are like that little puppy chasing our tail, <clears throat> trying to find happiness that is always out of our reach. What we need to do is to learn what we need to do is learn that if we go about our business and trust in the Lord, happiness will find us and will follow us wherever we go. Okay, so let's say a little prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, Help us to place our trust in you so that we may experience the happiness that only you can bring. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is 
is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. No Satan should perfect the trial should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, O oh, the bliss of his glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. A song in the night, O oh my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. That was incredible. As we prepare to give thanks for our blessings, I'd like to remind you that within your bulletin, you'll find a QR code, and if you'd like to scan that QR code. You could give safely and securely online that way. Or you can, if you're watching online, you can certainly use snail mail and send in your offering. Regardless of how you give, know that it's appreciated and used well. I invite you now to stand as we give thanks for all of our blessings. Oh Lord, this morning, as we bring you this offering, we are reminded that you are the God of all that has first been given to us. 
Lord, you constantly provide for us, always caring for us. And as we have been abundantly provided for, so this morning let us give abundantly to the work that you would have us do. Help us to use these gifts to care for those who are poor, hurt, and suffering. Lord, accept these gifts in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the risen Christ. Amen. You may be seated. This morning's Holy Scripture reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and insight. He has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to his purpose of him who accomplishes all things, according to his counsel and will so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is a pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You might remember that when we, when we take a group of texts together, that group of texts is called a pericope, okay? Just like periscope, but missing a letter in there, pericope. And you're probably about tired of these 14 verses by now, right? We've been, we've been harvesting these for a number of weeks, and, and we, we started with this, this idea that there are spiritual blessings that we've been given and that most of longtime churchgoers don't even realize or remember or, or, or intentionally think of each and every day. But the, nonetheless, we've got these spiritual blessings that have been given to us. We talked about adoption, being adopted into uh, Jesus' family. We talked about um, uh, redemption and the fact that God paid a price willingly for us. And today I want to talk about something that that might be for some, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty exciting. We're going to talk about inheritance. Now, uh, for for me and my house, inheritance, uh, I don't, probably a couple old pictures, right? I don't think we had a lot of inheritance when dad passed. But inheritance is this humongous subject that's out there and so difficult. I I will often tell people that I have seen more conflict in churches over inheritance than anything else I've ever witnessed. Uh, You know, sometimes it's uh, it's a parent that that goes overboard and tries to protect uh, the heirs, and, and sometimes it's a parent that does nothing and, and it creates this huge conflict. So we're talking about in, inheritance today. So out of all of that scripture that we read today, our focus is on verse 11 today. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of Him who accomplishes all things according to His counsel and will. <clears throat> so we've been destined 
for this inheritance. But inheritance, inheritance is hard. Inheritance uh, isn't easy. And not only does it cause conflict, but when sometimes when humans get inheritance, it can cause them problems. Let me give you an example. Um, th this is uh, from an article in the news, and it, it talks about this woman from the 1930s. Uh, th she was dubbed the poor little rich girl, uh, as Barbara Hutton became dubbed, was she was the heir to the Woolworth fortune. You remember those old Woolworth stores? Um, it was on her 21st birthday in the early 1930s when she came into her inheritance of 50 million, which adjusted for inflation would be over 900 million today. Uh, her inheritance came about as a result of her mother's de her mother's death. Uh, her mother died by suicide. And even though the young Hutton grew up wealthy, she grew up to be a deeply insecure adult. Her father was largely absent throughout her life, and her mother struggled with depression. Hutton's weakness was shopping. Shopping. And anybody in here? I think I've got a couple of daughters that would have that weakness. Uh, they don't have anything to shop with, but they shop. Um, Especially, she loved uh, buying uh, expensive gifts such as jewelry um, and other and art pieces uh, for for people. She once even bought a painting that was owned by Marie Marie Antoinette and gave it to a friend. Her spending wasn't her only downfall. Through a series of seven husbands and numerous affairs, her fortune dwindled, leaving her with almost nothing at the time of her death in 1979. At the age of 66. Whew. Inheritance can mess you up, can it? You ever, you ever heard of anybody fighting? Um, I, I had uh, uh, one family where there were, where there were three kids and, and they, they met to talk about they were dividing up the farm and um, uh, they, they kind of had some disagreements whether they were going to keep it or sell it or buy out the other one and and they said hey let's talk about it we'll come up with a plan uh we'll, we'll meet again in another week except the next day the 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 two that wanted to keep the farm actually got served a, a lawsuit and the, uh, the third one was suing them already i mean inheritance can be does this remind you of anything does this remind you of anything well how about this this is from luke chapter 15 then Jesus said there was a man who had two sons. See, it's already starting out tough. The, the younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had uh, been given and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place. Uh, took over throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of the country who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger." I'll get up, I'll go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like the one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. And then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, uh, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate, for this, is, this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. And they began to celebrate. Now the elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called out, to one of the slaves and asked what was going on and he replied your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he had has got him back safe and sound we know we, we know that right the prodigal son 
even back then, inheritance was messing us up. And isn't it funny, if you take a look at the youngest son who wanted his inheritance right now, he wanted it this minute, he wanted all the benefits of his inheritance, but he didn't want to wait for his father to die. I want my inheritance right now. And isn't it funny, when we look at what he did with his inheritance, he went out and squandered it, but yet his father and his older brother seem like pretty level-headed people, right? They don't seem like the kind of people that would just blow money. They, they, they were probably good business people and, and did things the right way, but yet this young person went out and just squandered it all. Nothing left. So I, I began to wonder if humans have this propensity to be stupid with large sums of money, with great inheritance, if it's pretty common for inheritance to come with conflict and poor decisions, why is it that, that God would give us our our inheritance today see if we if we read that verse it says look we've obtained our inheritance it doesn't say we're going to get it it's not a future event we've got our spiritual inheritance today why would God do that to us if all we have to look forward to is conflict and bad decisions maybe it would be helpful if we thought for just a moment about what it is that we're inheriting. What is it in this passage, this pericope, this text that we've been in for a month, what is it that we're inheriting? We're inheriting our eternal salvation, right? We're inheriting our time forever with God in paradise. We're inheriting God's grace, God's forgiveness, God's love, God's adoption into, our, into the kingdom. We've, we've inherited all of these spiritual blessings. And here's the thing, that, and, it, and, it, and it hit me. See, human inheritance, just like the prodigal son, that can, that can run out. That can be depleted. We can burn through the cash like the, like the Woolworth heir and have nothing left. But when God gives us the spiritual bless blessings, including our salvation and all of the other things, that's a forever huge number that we can't waste. It's impossible for us to squander it because God's love is never ending for us. And no matter what we do, we can't blow it. God gives us our inheritance today. We have that no matter what and we'll never run out. But we try sometimes, don't we? Don't we try to blow our, our spiritual inheritance? Don't we sometimes make some really bad decisions? Don't we, don't we do things that take us away from the presence of God, that, that call us out of those blessings, that make us feel like we're not in the middle of God's love. We're not in the middle of God's forgiveness. We don't deserve it. We do all of these things. We make all of the same bad choices in life. But what we found out is, no matter what, God is there offering us those blessings, our inheritance, His love, His forgiveness, his grace, His presence in our lives. There's nothing that we can do to get rid of that. There's nothing that we can do to waste it. There's never a time that we've blown it because in that time where we've made the most, the most 
egregious mistakes, when, when we, we've done some things that you would just think that we've sinned against God and, and, and our Father, it's in those times just like the story of the prodigal son. We come in terrible shape, begging for forgiveness, knowing that we don't deserve. And the first thing God does is He says, get a robe and put it on you. Give Him a ring. Let's have a feast. Because the one that was lost is found. Our inheritance will never run out. It'll never end. And there's nothing we can do that'll make God not welcome us home. Now in the next few weeks, now that we know that we have these spiritual blessings, we're going to talk about what that means for our lives. But know this, there's nothing we can do that will squander our inheritance from God. Let's pray. Lord, just when we think we've done something, made a, such a bad decision that we don't qualify for our inheritance anymore. Just in that minute when we think that there's no way that you could want us anymore. In that time, Lord, when we think surely after all of these mistakes, I've, I've got to have burned through my inheritance by now. It's in those moments that you meet us on the road and welcome us home with open arms. Lord, we... We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. And yet, You love us constantly. For all of this, Lord, help us to stay in a place where we can appreciate all of our spiritual blessings. Blessings that never, ever run out. Lord, help us to live lives like we are the blessed child. We pray all this in your Son's name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand now as we prepare to sing our closing hymn. Sisters and brothers in Christ, as we prepare to leave this sacred place this morning and enter back out into the world for one more week, remember, fear not.
Do not let your hearts be troubled, and in the midst of the storm, remember to trust in God. May the blessing of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit go with you today and every day. Go with God, and God will surely go with you. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.